The story of Musa and Al Khadr alayhi salam. This story originates with Prophet Musa alayhi salam giving an amazing speech about Allah's creation and how Allah created the heavens and the earth and what the heavens look like. Then after all the Bani Israel left his speech with their hearts moved and Iman filling their breasts, a man came to Musa alayhi salam and said to him, O oh Musa, are you the most knowledgeable person on earth? So Musa thinking, I'm the only guy that talked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm the prophet, I receive revelation. Therefore the answer is, yes. That's why he said exactly. I am the most knowledgeable person on earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reproached Musa alayhi salam. Telling him that you should have not said that. You should have attributed the knowledge to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he should have said, Allahu a'lam. Musa alayhi salam was informed that there was a man more knowledgeable than him. And this man in the Quran is simply Abd, a servant, a slave amongst our slaves. He's just a slave, but yet he has something that Musa doesn't have. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as they were walking and he was traveling, he said, Moses, look at that bird. And he watched the bird. And he said, watch as the bird takes a drink from the ocean. Allah said, O oh Moses, the knowledge that you have been given is like the sip of water that that little bird took from the river in comparison to the whole river. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Musa alayhi salam, Ya Musa, I have one of my slaves in Majma al-Bahrain who knows more than you. Do you know what he said? How can I find him? When you see a big rock, there's going to be a man there. Now Musa said, there may be many rocks, so how do I know? Give me another sign. He said, take a fish or a dead fish and put it in a bowl. When that fish comes to life, then you'll know that that man was there. So he took his boy. And Musa alayhi salam told him, oh, what you gotta do is what? Grab that lunchbox and the moment you see the fish missing, what do you do? You tell me, and this indicates that the man we're looking for is right here. Prophet Musa salam says, I will not quit until I find this man, even if I have to walk a long time until I find the place where the two seas parts, which means where the river splits and two rivers come together, even if I have to walk for an eternity. This is the Prophet Musa salam. He speaks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As they were walking, they saw a rock where they chose to settle and relax. So Musa alayhi salam sat along with Yusha and Noon, they slept. When they slept, what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered that water, because they're walking, walking on the shore, right? The seashore. That water came somehow and some drops on the fish. And then the fish came back to life. That fish jumped out of that lunch box and made its trace towards the water and then jumped in. When they woke up, Musa alayhi salam walked as, along with Yusha bin Noon. And Yusha did not notice the fish was missing. They kept walking and walking all day until the night came, until they both slept, until they both woke up. And then he asked Yusha, get us some lunch. And then Yusha remembered the fish. And he said, oh Musa, I remember now, Shaytan made me forget to tell you that that fish woke up and jumped out of the bowl and into the river and swam away some ways back. The fish jumped out of the bowl and swam away. Is that something you would forget? Mufassirin say, Joshua being the servant of Moses, he sees so many miracles every day from Moses that a fish coming to life and jumping out of a bowl was no big deal. This is what life was like with the Prophet Musa salam. Miracles every day that you shall forgot. And he said, then let's turn back. So they turned back and they went and followed their footsteps back and there they reached their spot.
So Musa alayhi salam, along with Yusha bin Nun, they go back to the rock and who do they find? A man covering his face. What are you doing here? At a cross section of two seas. Then they went and Musa alayhi salam, very humble, met that man and the name is Al Khidr. So he was covered, Musa alayhi salam, very humbly telling him, Assalamu alaikum. May peace be upon you. Very humble. And then look what Al Khidr responds. And how can there be peace in your country? Then Musa alayhi salam told Al Khidr, I am Musa. He told him, Musa bani Israel. He said, Naam, and I came to follow you and learn from your knowledge. Al Khidr said, I have knowledge that which you do not know, and you have knowledge that which I do not know. He asks, can I follow you? Initially, he rejected Moses as a student. He said, you cannot withstand being with me. You can't take it. Moses then pleaded with him. Finally, he accepted, but he said a condition. It might not make sense to you, but don't ask me about why am I doing it? What am I doing? Where I'm doing it? How I'm doing it? Until I tell you, deal, deal. And then they moved. And lo and behold, as they're walking by the seashore, they find a group of people on the boat. They went on the ship. Well, did they accept them to jump into the boat? Yes, they did. Did they pay for it? Did they pay the fare? No. They loved Al Khidr. They respect Al Khidr. They said, come along. Don't worry about paying us. Don't worry about it. Let's go. Apparently, their job, what was it? Is to take people from one place to another place. That's transportation. And Al Khidr didn't even pay to them. They said, we don't want any money from you. He broke the ship. Did you ruin it to make them drown? Then what did Al Khidr say? Didn't I say, you will not be patient? Then what did Musa say? I forgot, I forgot. And the khidr did not stop, and they kept moving. They saw a young boy playing with other boys, playing around. The boy was here, grabbed a sword, chopped his head off. A young boy was, had his head chopped off in front of Musa alayhi salam. The boy was playing with other kids. What did Musa say? Like, the first one, okay, evil, and I forgot, and I'll try my best. But the second one, he said, you killed an innocent soul that did not kill anyone else. You have no justification to what you've done. Killing that boy, what did he say? Didn't I tell you that you will not be able to be patient? Did he give him another chance? He does the third time. Now they were going and they were starving all day long in the ocean and then they saw that boy that got killed and now they're very hungry, they're starving. They go into an entire village where they're all stingy, knocking on their doors, telling them you have any food, no one giving them anything to eat, nothing. Then Al Khidr, as he was walking, he noticed there is a wall. Khidr said, Let's go, let's do this. Do what? Let's fix the wall. Fix the wall, okay. Fix the wall, okay, strain it up. Nice, straight, perpendicular, beautiful, perfect, solid, nice. Musa is like, Are you serious? They all refused to give us food, and you built an entire wall, reconstructed a wall for them? You could have asked him for money, you could have asked him for food, you've done a job. What did Al Khidr say? Tell you now, explain to you what the things that you were not been able to be patient about. The first thing, he destroyed the ship. Why? Al Khidr said, Allah informed him that a king was coming and taking all good ships. So I broke this ship so the king won't take it. So what is this lesson? Very quickly. It is good coming out of evil. It is also a minor evil putting out a worse evil. So what would you rather? A hole in your ship or your whole ship is stolen? He killed a boy. Allah told him, Prophet ﷺ said in hadith, this boy was stamped in the book of Allah's will, kafir. He's going to be a very bad boy. And he's going to destroy his family, his parents. Al Khadr killed him so that their parents will be alleviated from their, the tribulation he will bring. Again, a very bad evil, very bad. Losing a child, this is one of the worst things that could happen to a, a mother and a father. Why? To avoid a far greater evil that will, he will destroy them and they may become kuffar as well because of him. He built the wall. 
undeserved charity or misplaced charity. Why, amongst every evil people, there are some innocent children. And Allah told him, Al Khadr, under this wall is a treasure for two innocent boys in this village. If these people are so wicked, if this wall collapses, they will steal the treasure. And these two orphan boys will have no wealth to live off of. So build up this wall again to protect it from the evil people of this village.